Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be doing a lineup construction video on UFC Louisville. And again, this is going to be the third of three um, UFC breakdowns. Earlier this week, actually yesterday, uh, we did uh, a DFS preview where we talked about who the best plays are. Uh, today, we did kind of a fun contrarian betting breakdown. And now is what I consider the fun and most interesting part of DFS, and that is how to construct lineups with all the different tools available to you and specifically how to create lineups to win or hope to win the hundred thousand dollars or two hundred thousand whatever it is in the big 150 max tournament and one of the reasons that i enjoy dfs so much is this distinction between who the best plays are and who you should actually be playing in these types of contests um it, it's it's very akin to uh, my portfolio management background. It's it's one thing to know what good companies are. It's another thing to know what you know what good stocks are. You know, it's also one thing to know what good stocks are, but quite another to know how to combine those in a portfolio. And then it's one thing to know how to combine those stocks in a portfolio when you're only trying to make eight or nine percent. But it's another thing to put them in a portfolio where you're trying to to uh, to make like say 50%. It's completely different. Um, so I can know these fighters, like I can know these companies, I can know these stocks, like I can know these DFS entries or these DFS uh, uh, entry IDs, but to put these together in lineups specifically for this types of contest does require, you know, some, some art and some science. And the science is going to be using these tools that SaberSim and other sites uh, provide um, and the art is going to be figuring out, you know, kind of other ways to 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 tweak your your line of constructions. So let's 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 first start with, I guess, sort of a recap of like the best plays and what type of slate this is, because it is kind of important. It's a full fourteen fight card. All right, fourteen fights with only one five round fight means the, uh, a couple of things. Number one, it usually means that it's not going to be enough to get uh, six winners. Uh, it's not going to be enough to hit an underdog or two. What you really need is to get as much upside as possible because there are just so many more combinations when you have 14 um, fights, 28 fighters, that you really need to be shooting for extremely high scores. Uh, however, also to that point, because there are 14 fights and more combinations than usual, you don't have to be that... Uh, off the board when it comes to building these lineups to win the 100K. I mean, yes, you can't just like run the top 150 optimals or whatever, but you don't have to go too cuckoo. Uh, and believe me, I, I am all too willing to go cuckoo uh, when when needed. Uh, when you have these 11, 12 fight cards um, or you have two five round fights and everything rates to be sort of chalky, we can do that. And we can do the, the the cuckoo lineup builds, and we have several videos with that. But when you have a 14-fight card, you don't have to get two off the board, okay? Now, again, that doesn't mean you can just play the top 150 uh, optimals because you still are going to run the risk of being duped pretty hard, but not as hard, and there aren't that many mega dupe lineups on a 14-fight card. Um, in addition to that, this particular card is one where there's not an incredible swarm of ownership going to one fighter or two fighters. There, there are several extremely good, good spots and several extremely good fights. And because there are several, the ownership, is, in my opinion, is going to be spread a little bit more. Um, like, for example, that, um, that, uh, What's his name fight? Mar Marquez against, um, oh, I forgot his name. I forgot their names already. Uh, Marquez against uh, Reese, okay? That's going to be an extremely popular fight. It's going to be a really, really good spot, and people are going to play it, okay? But in addition to that, you're going to have the main event, which is going to have, you know, it's going to look really, really good. You're going to have the um, uh, Mora uh, and and the Mora, was it Mora versus Gomes? No, it's Mora versus... Um, 
Yeah, Morris versus Gomes. I think people are going to play the Morris side. I think I think Denise Gomes makes a lot of sense on the other side. You have the uh, Rad Keegan Prates. I think people are going to be playing both sides of that. Klein Moises is not a bad fight. You'll have um, Bruno Fajaya and some people play Stolpitz. These are all kind of the really good spots. And there are some some kind of obvious kind of poor spots, that being the, the Jacoby fight, the De La Rosa fight, um, even to some degree the um, uh, eh, sort of the Castaneda fight, but not as big of a deal, and the Brad Katona fight. I mean, his metrics are really poor, so I don't think that that's going to rate to be such a strong option either. So the point is, is that you can go a lot of different ways on this card. And as a result, you're not going to have one or two fights that are that big of a deal. Um, I do think that the main event is going to be pretty, you know, extremely highly owned. You're going to have Imovov is probably pushing 40%. You're going to have uh, Cannoneer maybe pushing even higher than that. Um, but aside from that, you know, there's not one of these, these, favorites that's that big of a smash over the other so uh what that what that means at least it means to me is that i'm not going to worry too much about about going crazy now what does that mean so going crazy when it comes to saber sim is this setting right here i already put the projections in I, i'm going to do them again you know whatever but just to show you the process i already put my projected ownership in and i uploaded everything i ran five thousand lineups and this first setting, this MMA default setting, is the most uh, off the wall, off the board uh, ranking of lineups that there is. You know, when you when you go through this again, for those of you, those of you who've been here, you know, just for the first time, um, you look at the formula that 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 uh, connotes uh, or denotes MMA default, and you have this formula in the middle, which is the 0. 0.5 times. 99th percentile whenever you have that it's really just completely projecting ceiling okay and that's it and you also get a negative 0.3 times the sum of adjusted ownership uh 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 what's the word i'm looking for input and that just just really just drives everything to to the asylum i mean you're gonna have uh, all lineups that are just caring about ceiling and all lineups that are just just dinging people for for uh for ownership these types of rankings are really good or really good really important to consider at least when you have 11 or 12 fights uh cards but in your 14 fight cards this is usually just too risky when i say that yes you're gonna i mean that they just are not gonna win all that often and yes i would bet that if you ran 150 in this setting and made a couple of little tweaks here here and there I would bet that a an incredible not say majority. I would I would I think I would say a majority of these are going to be unique. I think that's safe to say. Um, and while it's extremely important to get unique as much as possible, you know, in a fourteen fight card to go MMA default, you're really picking from the bottom of the barrel with respect to your lineup construction. And there's just so many others that you need to beat that um, it's probably not advisable to play too much with MMA default. I do think that um, it's an important part of your entire portfolio. So I'm going to play some, but normally I'll play at least 50 of MMA default, sometimes even a hundred. Um, the, the other thing that you want to think about is on a 14 fight card is, are you going to want to leave money on the table? Like on purpose? Um, yeah. I mean, you could, it, it, that is a way to get unique, but again, 14 fight cards, you don't need to do too much, too much, uh, too much stupid shit, right? That's an analytical term, by the way. Um, so I don't know if I'm going to actually intentionally leave money on the table. Um, but there are some fights where we could screw around a little bit, you know, because you have Jared Cannonier who's 7,600 and Imavov who's 8,600 and, you have Jared Cannonier at 40% ownership probably. So in those lineups, like the ones that you get, you know, you play Cannonier, it's probably a good idea to leave a thousand on the table there because what that, what that'll do is that will kind of trick the optimizers, right? The people that are you're competing against might end up getting all of those lineups that have say five other spots and then Imavov and then 8,600 left. 
it might put Imavov in there because he's going to project higher a little bit. Um, where if you play Cannoneer in that spot, you'll, you'll, you know, let's listen, you'll project a little bit lower, but the, the uniqueness will probably make up for that. And that's one thing that you can do with a, you know, with, with a kind of a chalky underdog like that. Um, so the way you can do that, you can, you could intentionally leave a thousand on the table uh, and then uh, X out, uh, what's his name? And then X out uh, uh, Imovov, right? This way you're either going to get nobody from that fight or Cannoneer, but in either case, you're going to get Cannoneer plus, you know, getting the, the thousand uh, with the thousand left on the table. But if you do that, then you're going to get no Imovov, which you probably don't want. But what I think is probably a good idea is for those those two fighters specifically is maybe you want to make sure that if you play either of those fighters that you do some funny business whether you do mma default whether you do well here's the other one the sheets default one which i kind of created what this does is it doesn't make you play the um the uh the uh what you call it the 99th percentile but if you click through this where is it uh sheets defaults it's somewhere oh here this one instead of put, putting in the 99th percentile it puts the 95th percentile so it's a little bit more tame but it's still pretty brutal so what you can do again is for your lineups with um with Imavov and Cannoneer, those you could either leave a thousand on the table with Cannoneer, or you can make sure that those lineups play something off the wall like the sheets default, right? Um but aside from that, um I don't think you need to do any other wild adjustments. We want to do just the normal stuff. So what is the normal stuff? Right. Let's 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 go back to it. Um, if you don't have access to contest sims, but you do have saber sim, this is the best way place to start. And this was MMA sim diversity. Um, and you know this is this is this is pretty good. Um, when you when you get into the weeds here and you you know click on the arrow and see how this is ranking these lineups, it's uh, rating them by. 100 times their sim optimal okay plus 0.8 times some of the projection and you get dinged a little bit for the average adjusted ownership so it's 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 fine you know it is a it's 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 designed to be a high upside lineup it does not exactly designed to be unique though so if you do play this grouping of lineups um i think this is probably the best grouping if you just wanted to have a contest to whether you get the optimal lineup or not but you are still even though it's a 14 fight card probably going to get uh probably too many dupes when you just do this so even though it's a 14 fight card i think you got to be a little bit different so i do think that using the contest sims is is is, is worth it's always worth it but i think that your baseline lineups should start with the contest sim adjusted lineup. So what that means is um, we have to figure out which of the 5,000 lineups or how we're going to rank them or which, what, what, what field lineups are we creating? How am I saying, why am I not saying this correctly? What, I'm, what we're trying to figure out is what the field is most likely to do. Okay. What does the field of, you know, 10,000 lineups going to look like? for us to compare our lineups to to figure out where we're getting leverage that was probably the worst i've ever tried to explain that uh, i do apologize but that's the best i'm doing here from uh best i'm going to do here the problem with uh saber sim for mma is that of uh, some uh, along with some other sports it doesn't give you too many options here um to figure out what field you're comparing it to uh it gives you this saber sim ownership field and what that is basically doing is it's saying listen we're gonna build you know uh 31,372 lineups because that's the amount of you know in the field um and it's gonna be completely based on saber sim ownership 
And that's okay, but but it really puts a lot of pressure on Saberson to be right. One thing you could do, and this is the decision I always have to start with, is is whether you should use this as your field or maybe you should use that 5,000 lineup set that I built. Now, if you want to try to gauge whether you want to do that, let's take a look at what that build looks like when it comes to just straight up ownership. So you look at this, you're not, you're not looking at exposure. What you're looking at is pool exposure because we're, we're, we're have the 5,000 lineups we're looking at. And we have to see if this ownership sort of makes sense here. And yeah, I mean, I, I guess 36% Cannoneer, I guess that could be a little light. 33% for Imovov, that could be a little light. 30% more, that's fine. Baez is fine. So I guess this is all right. But let, let's let's compare that. And what we're trying to do is figure out like what, what who's got better ownership here. So what does the Saber Sim ownership look like? So it's got 38% Mora. I mean, they are really um they're really taking a stand that Mora is going to be really, really popular here. Um so that really is what this comes down to. So if we go ahead and play and, and use the, the Saber Sim ownership, you might not get as much Mora because they're projecting her to be that much higher owned than, for example, than build one might, right? Like build one, well, that's more at 33. So I guess it's sort of close, right? So wait, so you have Mora with 33. And then if we looked at Saber Sim ownership, what about Cannoneer? Cannoneer 32. It's actually close. You can actually do either one and kind of be well within your rights on this type of card. So just to be different, you know, just in case other people are just going to use Saber Sim ownership, we are going to use build one. So let's uh, save settings. And run the contest sims. Um, let me see something. Okay. So let's see. Well, I don't even need to see what we're what we're getting here, okay? Because this is where we're supposed to start. Now again, I don't really care what we get. UFC throwdown, risk adjusted ROI. But I, I bet you'll you'll notice that you know you'll you probably get a lot of quote unquote the good plays, right? I mean, Mora, Marquez, Imovov, Baez, right? So on this particular card. I don't think that this is that bad. Um, I usually would say that this is a, you know, this is this is a a path to getting duped all too, you know, too much. But I think on a fourteen fight card, it it could be worse. Um, so you could just put this in. But one thing you do want maybe want to consider is this min uniques thing. So instead of going min uniques one, if we just made a min uniques two, get you a little more diversification. How does that really change anything? Get you a little more Imovov. And, uh, you know, everything else kind of remains the same. So you could play 150 just like that um, and, and be sort of well within your rights. But what I really like to do is maybe play 100 of these and then 50 we could screw around. Um, let's just see, for example, like if we did this, you know, like literally zero Lapalus, like, kind of zero with these. And I'm glad we're getting almost zero because one of the things that I was considering doing is manually Xing out fighters, which is something I almost never do. But because the fighters I'd probably X out, I'm really not getting to anyway. Um, I think uh, I think we're kind of okay. So instead of playing 150 with this, if we started with 100, okay, um, and... You know, so far so good. We'll save these to maybe the favorites, or we could actually save them to a file because 
what I want to do is I'm going to build a hundred of these and 50 kind of kooky lineups and, and just make sure that none of them are duped. But I really doubt that any of my kooky lineups are going to look anything remotely like this. So we can, I think, safely just put them in the favorites. But let's, we'll, we'll see. Let's put these in the favorites. So how do we build some, some, some weird ones? So as I mentioned, um, we have 50 lineups to spare. What if we play 25 lineups from the Sheets default settings? Okay. And again, what that's going to do, it's going to give us a, you know, give us a few more, you know, straight up unique lineups. I, I don't even see who we have. Okay. So we're going to go min uniques too. Maybe we go a little bit more. How many, What's the most amount of min uniques I can go here? For. so you we can go min uniques like all kinds of like kind of kind of fun kind of funny business here um and so we can play 25 of these and let's put these in the well we don't need to play min uniques four because again we don't want to go too crazy you know once you start going min uniques four then you end up you know what's the best i can describe this you end up really getting to the bottom of the barrel so we'll go just min uniques one here Maybe min uniques too. Uh, we'll go min uniques too. And we'll save these. And then the other thing I wanted to do was maybe leave some money on the table. Um, and I think the thousand number made some sense. Um, but here's the thing if I just say leave a thousand on the table, I'm not going to get lineups. I don't think with Cannoneer because I think Cannoneer, those would go to uh, to Imovov anyway, and the thousand would be left somewhere else. So what I think you have to do is really trick them and 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 play Imovov lineups, and then um, you have to play Imovov lineups and then just swap them out. Okay, I think that's the best way I can do this. Okay. So let's, uh, let's do that. Let's, let's, um, well, let's first leave a thousand on the table and, and see actually what we do get. Let's just go back to your straight, you know, your, your, your straight, it doesn't matter where we're going to start. Okay. But what we're going to do is we're going to leave a thousand on the table. Salary. No, Hold on. We're going to go filter. Sorry about that. Filter, add filter, salary, less than uh, 49,000. We go 49.1, right? 100. Okay. And, oh, look at these. Cannoneer, Cannoneer, Cannoneer. Okay, this is good. This is actually... Pretty much exact. Uh, again, all cannoneers. Ooh, one with an app. This one's probably pretty good. The Imovov. So this is. These are all actually pretty good, but mostly are these cannoneer lineups. So I'm getting them organically anyway, which is what I like. All right. So so this is fine. So let's um, let's put these into this favorites as well. And let's just see how many lineups we have. Do we have 150? No, we only have 138. Okay, so that means that we that we duped something. Okay, but that's good that it picked this up. So we have 12 more lineups that we can play. So what have we kind of forgotten? You know, well, one thing we forgot is again, I, I played, I only played 25 lineups of 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 sheets default. So I think we should probably get a little bit more unique. So let's try to find 12 other lineups. We don't want the new build. Let's find 12 other lineups from, again, from a very off the board setting. And that that's going to be MMA default. I think that's, that's the way to do it. So play 12 lineups from MMA default. We'll put these into favorites. Should make sure we have them. One thirty nine. We're still not. We're still not getting what we want. 
Um, so what do we want to do? We we got to find twelve other lineups from 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 a different setting, I guess. Let's see. You could certainly go back into into the Sims here. And here what we can do is just is is just leave more money on the table with some lineups. So let's let's see what's what's a, another bit of uh, business we can do. Oh, you know what we can do? Let's play 12 more lineups that completely fade the main event. I think that's a good idea. Fade the main event, fade the main event. And this is part of the Sims. And we'll also, should we also uh, do MMA default? No, I think this should be enough. So let's let's save these to the favorites. I presume that we should have enough. Okay, save from 151. Okay, that's perfect. Okay, so let's uh let's upload these. Actually, you don't do it this way, right? So save these to my contests, save it here, and down we go. So this is not your normal like sheets off the wall setup. Um, sometimes I would even consider doing some geo mean filtering and things like that. But I think that with 14 fights, I don't think you need to do that. So that's where I'm going this week. Uh, hope this helps somewhat and uh, gives you some uh, things to think about. Good luck, everybody.